Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome to Huda Tonight coming to you live from Cairo, Egypt. I'm your host for the rest of the evening, Arkham Rashid. Now, this past week, we've been doing many episodes on Huda Tonight about Hajj because we are in the Hajj season. And tonight, we will continue with our Hajj season episodes. And in tonight's episode, we want to speak about Hajj and equality. What rituals and what aspects of Hajj show equality? So let's start off by welcoming and introducing our guest. On my right-hand side, I have Omotosho Dhikrullah from Nigeria, who is a student at Al-Azhar University. Assalamu alaikum and welcome Assalamu to the alaikum show. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum Next to him, we have Jamal Tumusimi from Uganda. Assalamu alaikum and welcome to the show. Wa alaikum salam. You're welcome. Uh, I hope both of you guys are doing well tonight and I'm um, looking forward to this conversation we're about to have. Uh, so let's start off by speaking a little bit about equality since our episode is comparing equality and Hajj no. or equality in Hajj. So what does equality mean to you? Equality in Islam, it means that all the people who are equal, as it is described by Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa told us, oh messenger, oh you people, all of you, you are equal. No, 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 there's no difference between Arab and non-Arab. No difference between white and black. Most of you, all of you are equal. The best among you is the person who are fearing Almighty Allah. That is God fearing. Is the best among you. And if you look at uh, the holy book, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he told us that, oh, my people, all of you, you are created for male and female. You are created for male and female. And we, are, we created you due to nations and tribes. That is, the nations and tribes were different. All these signs is just for differentiate between each, and another, each one and another. This now serves as uh, one have superiority or offer than the other person. We are all equal. So. That's quite interesting. Uh, how about you, Jamal? What does equality mean to you? Uh, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. All praises are due to Allah, the Lord of the world, the entirely merciful, the especially merciful. He who created neither begets nor was he begotten. Uh, equality in Islam encompasses every aspect got to do with um, coexistence as a single uh, people with a single origin and having a single destination, living with a single purpose. And that's uh, described in Allah's uh, verse in Surah Al-Anfal, I think, the eighth chapter, verse 49, as the brother has said, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ya ayuha al-nas, inna khalaqnaakum min dhakari wa untha. وَجَعَلْنَاكُمْ شُعُوبًا وَقَبَائِلًا لِتَعَرَفُوا إِنَّ أَقْرَمَكُمْ عِنْدَ اللَّهِ أَتْقَاكُمْ All you, who, all you people, he didn't say Muslims or believers or Arabs or what, whatever nation, he said all you people, a collective call to all humankind, the race, the only race that we know of in Islam, the human race. You were created from a single male, that's Adam, and a single female, that's uh, our mother, uh, uh, Hawa or Eve, and made out of you tribes, nations and tribes, so that you can know each other. For indeed, the best unto Allah amongst you is the most pious. Mm -hmm. So in Islam, we grade people according to their fear of God. Their righteousness, not, we do not base on color, we do not base on uh, historical backgrounds. We do not base on, uh, on uh, whether they know or they do not. But as long as you can worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as he deserves to be worshipped, then you are the best amongst mankind. That's equality. But in our daily life, 
uh, 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 we, we hear people uh, talk of uh, uh, gender, inequal uh, gender equality or human uh, whatever. Those who uh, uh, go up, uh, raising their voices, demonstrating that they want humanitarian organizations to you talk about equality, but they do not fully really know what equality is because wherever you go, there are institutions, those who come to say that we need equality, equality, they do not understand equality until they come to Islam. So uh, uh, in brief, uh, that's what I can talk about equality in an Islamic perspective. Hmm, that's very interesting as well. Both of you guys shared some very interesting points there on your thoughts of equality. Now, uh, on this episode, basically what we want to do is speak about equality and Hajj. Uh, so the first thing I want us to speak about is the Prophet's khutbah during Hajj. What aspects of equality did he mention there and what commands of equality did he mention in his last sermon? No. Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, when he performed his last Hajj, he gathered his people. He told him that, oh my people, as we've already mentioned in the Quran, he recited this ayah, uh, uh, yeah, After that, Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa he lets them know that most all, all, all the people, we are all equal. If you have slave, whatever you are feeding, you must be feeding your slave. The same thing you are eating, you must be feed your, uh, your slave. Whatever you are clothed, you must be clothing your slave. Anything you are doing, don't discriminate that. Uh, this is half not, it's half not in society. This is just, it's, you are just a slave. Don't ever do that. All of you are equal, Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. It lets us know that. And if you look at, in this age, that all of us are equal because we are worship just only one subhanahu wa ta'ala all the people came from all the outside from all, from the other nations we came we, we did one one cloth is one cloth that is all the people wear white whether you are black or you are rich or you are poor we have to wear this same garment so islam taught us this that all all the muslims we are equal ah. mm. Uh, Jamal, what can you take from the last khutbah of the Prophet ﷺ in terms of equality? Uh, the Prophet ﷺ in his only hijjah, hijjatul wida, <coughs> he made an example that we have to live up to now uh, as regards equality and uh, social justice. He talked a, a lot of, about a lot of things concerning the social living, the social statuses of Muslims. He, say, he said in his uh, speech, his sermon at, uh, uh, at Arafah, where very many people were gathered from all walks of life, from all corners, you know, after the conquest of Makkah, very many people came to uh, embrace Islam. So in that hijjah, there were very many people there whom he addressed. And in part of his kutbah, he said, Ya Yohannas, kullukum li Adam wa Adam min turab. All you people, all of you are from Adam, and Adam is, was created from clay. So he says that uh, there is no uh, superiority of the Arabs over a non-Arab. He said, no, is there farq bayna abyadun ala aswad. There is no difference between uh, 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 white and black. And, and uh, there is no superiority over white over a black, no black over white. He said that. The most uh, uh, loved unto Allah, the most inna uh, akramakum uh, in Allah, the most honored unto the sight of Allah is the most righteous. He talked about very many things, equal, gender equality too. He spoke about uh, uh, how female must be treated, not to be treated like the way they were treated before Islam, being kept as uh, slaves being kept as uh, 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 some commodities for men, you know. He made very many points regarding social uh, equality uh, as Islam is concerned. So 
that uh, that khutbah, that last sermon of the prophet, was a turning point because some other things were still done in Islam until that verse was sent unto him. Al-yawma akmaltu lakum deenakum wa atmamtu alaykum ni'mati wa raditu lakum al-islam deena. You see, today I have perfected your religion. You see, by perfecting the religion, it means that everything is complete. Everything is complete. Uh, there is no more racial segregation. There is no more superiority that we are supreme, we are superior over this race or uh, the slaves are. No. Everybody is equal in the sight of Allah. Unless you have that preferred uh, 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 faith of being more pious than others, that you will be, your status will be more elevated over the others. But apart from that, we are all one and we are all equal. Mm. And uh, I think if you like analyze the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam's last khutbah, you can see throughout the khutbah, majority of the content is about equality. Uh, whether it starts uh, speaking about usury, uh, interest, and the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam bans this and he says that uh, the first interest to be canceled is, is the interest of his interest, uncle. Yeah. And this is a way Microphone. of equality also because there used to be an oppression to the poorer people. Yeah. Uh, also, I think uh, what you mentioned there, brother, uh, the Qur'an was something to do with the Day of Judgment, or uh, sorry, not Day of Judgment, how everybody wears the same clothes, uh, and this reminds us of the Day of Judgment, how everybody will stand in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on the Day of Judgment equally, uh, just like uh, on the Day of Hajj, or during Hajj, everybody wears the same exact clothes, mm -hmm. and they come from different walks of life. Mm -hmm. So you'll have people who are extremely rich, and you'll have people who are extremely poor, and you'll have people who are white, black, uh, brown, different races, different tr uh, tribes, different people, different countries. And they're standing in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as one, as, a, as one nation, as one people, <laughs> and wearing the same exact clothing no matter where they're from, no matter who they are mm -hmm. outside of Hajj. And this is similar to the Day of Judgment because on the Day of Judgment, no matter who you were in this world, no matter how much money you had in this world, it won't matter. You're going to be standing in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with the person next to you as his equal. Mm -hmm. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will judge you uh, based on your good deeds and bad deeds, not what you did in this world, uh, as in what you earned in this world, how much money you had, what position you had, this won't matter in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So I feel there's this connection as well, uh, as you were mentioning. Uh, the next thing I want to get into is, th which aspects of Hajj, or rituals of Hajj, show equality? Oh, mm -hmm. we, we talk about, about Hajj. Mm -hmm. I think we have been dis uh, explained this before. So about Hajj, we are talking about equality. The, well, we have equality, as I was, as I was mentioned before, in uh, when they are wearing when they are wearing a uh, ihram, they wearing what that white garment. All most of them, all of them are equal. There is no difference between maybe you are white or black, you are rich or poor. They are equal. And when you perform tawaf, when they are perform tawaf, al safa wa marwa. That uh, seven times uh, they used to perform in the Kaaba. They used to perform it equal. There's no person, you can't you can say that, okay, I, can't, I don't have power to do this, so I want you to do this on my behalf. If you know you want, to, you want someone to do this on your behalf, you, 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 you will never come from your country. You stay to your country, as it, at it, uh, as it was mentioned that uh, whoever, for, for those who, Act is compulsory on. If you have, if you have, if you have enough power, or you have incurable disease to perform Hajj, you can send one to represent you. But whenever you reach this Hajj, you as you, as as much as you have, it's, it depends on your head. So, according to your head, maybe you have power to to perform this, or you don't have it. All people are equal. Maybe you are come from, you are a king from your country, or you are whatever you are, you are rich or you are poor. More of all of us, we are equal in this aspect. When we, are, when we perform a tawaf and a ihram, when we put our ihram. Yeah. Yeah. Very interesting point. Uh, Brother Jamal, yeah, would you like I to add? I think uh, what the brother is trying to explain is um, uh, um, 
the, the, the rituals, all of the rituals. We don't have these classes like maybe you board on an aeroplane, there is the first class and the, you know, hijja is hijja. You, a, a rich, a king, an emir, a sultan, a president, prime minister, all of you are standing in one place, putting on one cloth, reciting the same talbiya, at the same time praying together, walk together, move together. You see, then which other equality can be shown apart from that? When, uh, if we go back to history, we remember uh, uh, one uh, um, uh, activist, a nationalist called Malcolm X in 1964 when he made Hijja. He, he, went, he went to Mecca as uh, an African uh, activist uh, 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 for uh, for black Americans in America, but he came back from Hijja with another point of view, correctly because he went thinking that they deserve to be treated differently from whites in America. But after coming from Hijja, according to what he said, he said people would not believe that he has experienced a gesture that he has never seen in his life. At, at Kaaba, something that he had never seen even in America, a country that, 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 that uh, uh, pretends to be the, the guardian of human rights. He said, seeing a king standing beside a slave, a slave, seeing a, 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 a white standing beside, a, a, all of them are praying, prostrating the same, doing the same act at the same time, putting on the same clothes, he was mesmerized. So. Uh, he said, from now onwards, I'm an activist for all human equality. I'm no longer an activist for blacks, because black and white have no difference, according mm -hmm. to what I've seen. Mm -hmm. So uh, there's no way you can find equality expressed the way it is in expressed Islam. in Islam, it's and fine. more so in Hijarites. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, so, it's so amazing, actually. Uh, what, what we're going to do now is watch a video about the Kiswa. Uh, but before we go to watch this video, I want to uh, thank you, Brother Omar Tosho, for uh, joining yeah, us. Yeah, uh, because, uh, inshallah, after we watch this video, we will have another guest joining us. So, uh, this is our salam to Brother Omar Tosho. Uh, stay tuned and watch this video, and we will comment on it after we come back. Thank you. For In this short video, we'll take you in a journey to visit the factory that manufactures the cover of the Kaaba, which is known in Arabic as the Kiswa. Here is the direction signpost that guides hajis and visitors through the factory. Bismillah, alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salam ala rasulillah wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa man wala. The Kaaba was the first house ever established on earth for the worship of Allah SWT. Allah SWT says in Surah Al Imran, Verily, the first house established for mankind was the one at Bakka. It is full of blessings and guidance for the Alameen. Since approximately Two centuries before the time of the Prophet وسلم, the Kaaba was clothed with a kiswa for the first time. It was given as a gift from a Yemeni king by the name of Tubba. Since that time, the leaders and kings have all raced and sought to have the honor of dressing the Kaaba with the kiswa. Today, we'll see firsthand how it's made here in Mecca, Saudi Arabia. The belt section. The belt used to tie the cover of the Kaaba is manufactured here. Many hajis and visitors come to this place to see how the kiswa, the black cloth of the Kaaba, is made. Visitors are given complete access to see how the cover is made through different levels of handwork. This gives a special happiness to visitors who come here to see the production process of the Kiswa. So here we are in the belt 
department where the beautiful calligraphy that we find at the top of the Kaaba is hand sewn. So here we can see that first of all they, they take the silk and they actually have the design printed on, onto the silk. And then after that they use a yellow cotton, this is pure cotton, um, which they use to give it the, the, the beveling. And then after that they use a green, a green cotton which gives the outline for the final gold uh, layer which is applied, or the gold embroidery. Uh, it's not pure gold, but in actual fact it's silver uh, with gold plating. So you can see it's a, it's a very intricate and precise art and skill. Uh, one of these pieces would take approximately two months to complete. My name is Hassan Abdul Hadi. I am the director of Hajj and Umrah Company. We are very pleased to visit the factory. The Hajjis and honorable visitors who come to visit the factory have the opportunity to see the different levels through which the cover of the Holy Kaaba is made. It is our pleasure to see Hajjis and visitors come to see how the Kiswa is manufactured. We thank our Saudi brothers who provide visitors great support in their visit. These brothers also provide great hospitality to the Hajjis and all those who come here to visit. Visiting the factory is one of the historic moments to visitors as they have the honor to see the Kiswa factory and the manufacturing process. The brothers working in the factory allow the Hajis to participate in the manufacturing process with little work, which is a great blessing to the Hajis. Indeed, the workers are very nice people. We thank them very much. For those whom Allah SWT blesses to go inside the Kaaba, they'll find this Kiswa. Most people, they, when they think of the Kiswa, they only think of it as the black outer layer, but there's actually two layers. You've got the exterior and also the interior. So here we can see behind us uh, a model of how the Kaaba looks from the inside. Um, and you can see that the, instead of the black color, there's a, a green Kiswa that they're using. And it's decorated with the same style um, with the verse of the Quran and, and the names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Almighty. And this is also the same kisra that you'll find inside of the, the hujra of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, his, the room that's in, in Medina. Uh, it has the same, same uh, style, the only difference is the actual verses which are embroidered onto the fabric. Um, so, so here we are with this replication or this model. Assalamu alaikum and welcome back. Now, uh, before we continue to comment on the video that we just watched, I want to introduce our guest for this part of the program, Yusuf Abdul Jami from Nigeria. Assalamu alaikum and welcome to the show. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullah. Thank you. Uh, Yusuf, so let's start off by asking you uh, what your thoughts on the video was about the Kiswa of the Kaaba. Uh, alhamdulillah, I think uh, there's no big there. Like the you know there are people imagine a lot of things about the Kaaba. Uh, just to educate us about mm -hmm. some of our imaginations, so, so it's not big D and, you know, and uh, misconception from other religions about the Kaaba and what it takes. So, and it's an enlightenment, uh, and in telling us uh, what Kaaba it is. Just a monument that symbolizes where the the the, the 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 forefathers and um, the past prophets as. Um, perform something or what it, it really represents, the Kaaba represents itself. So talking about the Kiswa itself, there's no big deal we see the people doing it. Not that maybe something fell from the heaven or something like We know people have different misconceptions about the Kiswa, about the cloth and something like that. Mm -hmm. It's really an, uh, an educative um, show, I mean the video, 
So for, for some of us to see what, so we, we see the inside of the old Kaaba that is not big D. Maybe somebody, you know, we have a lot of shirk that is attached to it. Mm -hmm. So if somebody could start well, from the, what's it called, manufacturing. So I think those who are attaching a lot of things to the clothes and something like that, you should have started from the factory. So it's an education, uh, educative uh, program and enlightening that there's no big deal about the cloth, just to beautify the cover. So uh -huh. Thank you. Uh, Jamal, how about you? Do you have any thoughts on the video that we just watched about the kiswa? Yeah. Um, uh, the video is, uh, shows the compassion that people have towards serving Allah, even to uh, uh, this thing that we would imagine to be very insignificant. but. Uh, you know, uh, somebody would like at least to have that needle and make that uh, uh, thread move across the, the words written there with the golden uh, 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 colored uh, thread. You see, w w some things that we learn from, uh, you see, that Kaaba, that cube, is not that much or maybe somebody could say something that's interested to be seen. But the compassion and the love we have towards Allah's commandments because people build castles which are much even prettier than when he compared but not in, in honor you know walillahi al a'la you see people would like you know where I come from people have many misconceptions about the Kaaba you find some other atheists or non-muslim say you people go to Kaaba to worship your prophet inside the cab. You say, no, 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 you say, look. So if such a things are brought to media and the media produces them to people, the people are educated and they now understand that, oh, no, there's no big deal. They are only loving what Allah told them to. And it is nothing uh, uh, more than uh, having love and faith in Allah and what the Prophet told us because, you know, Concerning the Kaaba after Fath Makkah, the, the keys to the Kaaba were governed by a tribe which was not part of the Muslims. So one of the companions wanted to take back the key. I'm trying to drive the, a point out of mm -hmm. the, sure, the Kaaba issue. Well. So this, this, this verse, I think in Surah Nisa, is it Nisa or Baqarah? Yeah. And to add the amanati ila ahliya wa ida hakam tum baina nas and tahkumu bil adl. So, uh, some people think that no, this is another thing that the, the Saudi uh, kingdom puts there to earn out of tourism. No, it's a religious, uh, uh, loyal, uh, and the holy place of worship that even it wasn't. Uh, 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 there was no need for Saudi Arabia to take anything from anybody. It's open for everybody to go. So uh, I think people have to be educated via some uh, thing, visuals like this to make them leave the misconceptions they have uh, about the Kaaba and the Hijjah at large. Mm. So, no, uh, what I found interesting in the video was uh, when the sheikh was looking at that small piece and he said uh, this something like this size would take about two months to complete and I found that very interesting how <laughs> they take their time and make sure everything is perfect and uh, very beautiful subhanAllah. Uh, subhanAllah Yusuf so just to give you an update what we were speaking about before you joined us in this okay. program uh, we were speaking about the different aspects and the different rituals in Hajj that show and mm -hmm. broadcast equality and uh, the brothers here mentioned some very good points such as you know everybody wears the same clothes there's no difference between somebody who's white somebody who's black somebody who's rich somebody who's poor because everybody's standing in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala worshipping him in the same clothes saying the same talbiyah as brother Jabal mentioned and doing the same prayers at the same exact time uh, what other aspects or what other rituals of Hajj can you see equality in? I think uh the, 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 the Hajj itself is a point of um, uh, it's a, it's a, it depicts equality because seeing everybody standing in one place. I will just uh, call make a, a quote from uh, Muhammad, uh, what's it called? Uh, Abdul Malik, Alaj Abdul Malik uh, Shabbat. Malcolm, Malcolm X. 
It says when he happens to visit the the uh, the arch, the embarking on the arch pilgrimage, he said, in my twenty in my thirty nine years on earth, it says the only city of Kaaba as is the first time that I stood before the creator of all and felt the sense I felt like a complete human being. Mm -hmm. So the place we are gathering itself is another symbol of equality. Because nowhere you know, some of our maybe even in our community we have areas we part ourselves classically. We have some people, for example, here yeah, we have some people living in maybe from modern, uh, in Rehab. We know the caliber of people who are living there. We know the caliber of people who are living in Darosa. We know the caliber of people who are living in different places. Slums. But yeah, you're talking about that place itself, the mosque shows equality, that everybody is there. Be it poor, irrespective of uh, their, their, their differences in the social status or economic or even the language barrier, every one of them is there. And another thing that will portray that is the Talbia that you have said that every one of them pronouncing one thing. And that really shows equality. So and another thing is the Kaaba itself. Because every one of us, like one of my brother says when he happened to visit, he said, on getting to the arch, seeing the Kaaba, you know what happened to him? He burst to tears. Because immediately he burst to tears, the next person beha beside him did the same thing. And before you realize, at the left side, they were just like that. It shows yeah. sense. We have that just common goal, and like a so common sense of belonging at that spot. So the, the, the scene itself, I mean, the whole rituals paternity symbolize equality. So, and a lot of things, it, sh it shows that the, the, the Arafa, we were talking about the Arafa itself, everybody going in one direction, and nobody's doing itself. Maybe the Americans say, no, we have America. Um, today is for the Americans to, to climb the, the, the to go to, for, for the Arafa. To, uh, tomorrow is for the Saudi, nothing like that. Every one of us is just before one God. Mm. Okay, and uh, before I actually get Jamal's opinion, I just want to hear some more from you about uh, why do you think there's such a show of equality in Hajj itself? Mm, I think, uh, uh, like, one thing is it is not about Hajj itself alone. Mm -hmm. It's about Islam. Because Allah says, uh, uh, it says, uh, And uh, he even says in the Quran, he says, إِنَّا خَلَقْنَاكُمْ شُعُوبًا وَقَبَعِيلًا لِتَعْرَفُوا إِنَّا أَكْرَمَكُمْ إِنَّ اللَّهِ عَتِقَوْكُمْ So even Islam itself is an embodiment of equality. Everything about it is a compass in equality. Starting from the first pillar of Islam, which is كَلْمَتُ شَهَدَةً لَا إِلَىٰ إِلَىٰ اللَّهِ For everybody, you are allowed to pronounce that. And it wants you to pronounce. And that's what Rasulullah Sallam says in the uh, what's it called? In this Hujatul uh, Wada, one of the Hutuba that is, Inna Dima'akum, it says, Haram, Inna Dima'akum, Wa Amwalakum, Haram, Alekum, Kahurmatukum, Fihadal Yom. So it's talking about once that person pronounced that thing, he has, uh, he has, uh, he has uh, gained the benefit of brotherhood. And that's why we say that his blood is thicker than water, and the faith is thicker than, than blood. Wow. So you says the hekwa, and they will use that, ah, is my brother, is my brother, and brother in the faith is thicker than brother in blood. Then comes to the next one, which is the salat. For every one of us at one time, we pray together. Irrespective of our social status, we pray on oneself. So if the, then come to the asom, every one of us must observe that psalm at that point in time. So it shows that when the, 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 rich, the rich man is breaking, he, he has to break his fast, same time. Mm -hmm. And we pray, we observe everything, everything in Islam depicts and come to Hajj itself. So it's not about the Hajj itself, but it's about Islam. Islam. So Islam itself is a religion of equality, is a religion that never differentiates between one or the other. And the Rasulullah has said that in, a, in, a, in, a, in his hadith that. Kulukum in Adam, or Adam in Turab. So every one of us, you have, every one of you are from Adam, and Adam is from dust. So, and he says, La fadlu al Arab ala la ajami. So the, the, the Arab, they don't have any value, they don't have any prestige or any honor. 
above others. And even after Rasulullah came some other of us, some of our scholars, somebody like uh, Sibawai, that is the is known to be the the Himam Nuhato, uh, the, mm. the the grammar. The grammar. He, he happens not to be an Arab, as the history said. And a lot of our other scholars that shows that even <laughs> Arabic is not Islam is not restricted mm. to Arab. Mm. So a lot of this like that, that shows that yeah, Islam is for every one of us. Subhanallah. There's some very good points you mentioned there, actually, Yusuf. Uh, dear viewers, now what we're going to do, we're going to watch a small video on Hajj and equality. And when we come back from watching this video, we're going to get our guests' opinions on this video. So stay tuned. <laughs> Millions of pilgrims from all around the world converge in Mecca every year. They retrace the footsteps of millions of Muslims who have made the spiritual journey to the Valley of Mecca since the time of the Prophet Ibrahim, peace be upon him. O oh people, your God is one, and your forefather Adam is one. An Arab is not better than a non-Arab, and a non-Arab is not better than an Arab. And a red person is not better than a black person, and a black person is not better than a red person, except in piety. The result of a successful Hajj is a richer inner peace, which is manifested in the values of justice, honesty, respect, generosity, kindness, forgiveness, mercy, and empathy. All these values are attributes of Allah the Most High. These values are indispensable to us all, the human race. Hajj and congregational prayer in Islam represents the highest and clearest representation of equality amongst all human beings, far from any discrimination based on the caste system, race, color, or gender. In the pilgrimage, people from all around the world, including rich and poor, black and white, men and women come together and assemble in one place in one dress the value of equality in islam is not limited to prayer and hajj rather the whole system of islamic faith intends to teach equality and equity in society malcolm x was so inspired by what he witnessed that in his letters to friends and relatives he wrote America needs to understand Islam because this is the one religion that erases from its society the race problem. Former heavyweight boxing champion Mike Tyson was touched by the unity and equality he saw amongst the pilgrims when he performed Hajj in 2010. In his visit to Mecca, Tyson said, I just left the holy city of Mecca where I was blessed to have been able to make Umrah. He added, Insha'Allah, God willing, Allah will continue to bless me to stay on the straight path. He also said, I couldn't resist shedding tears when I came to know that I was in one of the gardens of paradise. Hajj is the greatest example of equality and unity. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us all and give us the ability to perform this great pillar of faith. Welcome back. I hope you guys enjoyed that short video clip. Now we'll start off by getting Brother Jamal's opinion and his comments on the video. Go ahead, Brother Jamal. Uh, uh, I think uh, the brother who has clearly put uh, the point, uh, he has helped us drive the point home, that Hajj is meant to make us uh, 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 universal citizens and live in peace and harmony uh, uh, as one. Uh, yeah, and on contrary with what is going on now, you see, everybody is living to saying that we are the best. But Islam says, no, that's not how we are supposed to be. We are one. There's no better person. There's no best amongst us apart from the best in righteousness, just the way the prophet said it. You know, he has elaborated more and given 
some of the examples, uh, the two of the, 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 the people we know of, Malcolm X, Michael Tyson, who have visited the places and have seen the differences. They have uh, 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 seen what is meant by equality and who are they that they claim to you know, uh, 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 be human rights activists, yet they are violating human rights in actual sense. Uh, uh, I enjoyed when he said that Malcolm X said, America needs to understand Islam. So joining what he says with what is going on now, I think uh, the, the, the Democrat uh, co contestant uh, to be he, Kasano, uh, what he commented last, uh, uh, last week, he said he does not think that a Muslim has to lead America. So, but if they would really understand what's the meaning of God bless, uh -huh. whatever, America, uh, whatever, we will see that the term God, whenever the term God, Allah, is mentioned, there comes calmness within humanity that we all belong to him. You can't say we belong to him and the others do not. What, do you, what are you trying to insinuate at? I think uh, the video is uh, quite uh, very clear and vividly explains how we are one race. The others are differences uh, in uh, appearance, but the race is one, the human race. Mm -hmm. Exercised in every act of worship in Islam, more so El Hajj. Mm -hmm. uh, Yusuf, what were your thoughts on the video then? Uh, well, I just to add to what they have said, I think I will quote from, uh, like you said, that America has to, from uh, Malcolm X speech, that America has to understand Islam. You know, before, Malcolm X back on the Hajj, he was the, uh, the, how would I call it, the advocate of uh, black race, something like mm -hmm. that. Then on visiting the Hajj, he came back with another thoughts, with another ideology, believing that every race, every human being, we are one. So to him before, black man are superior. And mm. black man are more strong. Black man are, ah, 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 ah. Mm. But after the Hajj, and you realize that every one of us the same before the Almighty God. So whatever the problem of the, you know, we have a lot of problems. Like here I said, the accorded that one of the contestants for the post of the president in the United States. And even looking at, I think sometimes ago they are having this problem of racism in America. Up to now they are still having it, clean of the black and something like that, KKK clocks and something like that. These are problems we created with our own. But if man follows Allah's rules and regulation, I think we will have no problem. Every one of us, like that's why we say it's the essence. This faith is thicker than the blood. There's no man, there's no how you love your brother, you love your own close brother, uh, than the, 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 the far one. But when you talk about faith, it's a general thing that brings every one of us together. Mm. Uh, all right, so you know, this whole episode we spoke about different aspects of equality in Hajj. Mm. We spoke about, uh, we extracted some of the, the, the points that the Prophet ﷺ mentioned in his khutbah about equality. Mm. And we also spoke about the rituals in Hajj itself and how they portray equality. And Alhamdulillah, you guys mentioned so many beautiful examples uh, from Malcolm X uh, and so many examples from the Prophet ﷺ from what he said. Uh, now I want to speak about something in general. Uh, equality in general and the importance of it in Islam. Why is equality important in Islam? Why does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tell us to you know, act upon equality and be equal and be fair with everybody? Uh, Bismillah ar-Rahman rahim I think to me personally, I think the question, like I said, I'll go back to that. that that's the essence of Islam. Mm -hmm. Because uh, when there is the opposite of equality, it's injustice. And uh, Rasul Allah says, وَمَا أَرْسَلْنَاكَ إِلَّا رَحْمَةً لِلَّا عَلَمِينَ And that's the essence why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has sent the prophets. So that they can what? Uh, establish justice and equality. So people that they don't have will be able to live. They will have a, a certain uh, community. So mm -hmm. talking about the essence in Islam, I think the old, like I said, like I dictated, everything that Allah is just telling us that he himself, he Allah, is the Lord of every one of us. And that is what is said in the Quran. Uh, in, uh, so don't see this race as something big. 
Maybe because you are white, you think you are superior. Or because you are black, you think you are superior. No. Inna akramakum in the lie at kokum. It's just telling us, work on yourself. Yeah. Work on your within, your art. Prefer your art. See your fellow brother as your... Because you go through the same process. So this is Islam. Talking about equality, I don't think, see anything maybe we're talking about Islam and equality, no. When you're talking about Islam, the, the, the meaning of equality itself is Islam, and the meaning of Islam is equality. So talk, there's no different definition for Islam, except we talk about equality, because all the princi five principles of Islam itself is what is an uh, uh, explanatory to what we mean by equality. I like how you said uh, Islam is equality, and equality Islam. That's a very good quote yeah. there. Uh, Jamal, would you like to share something with us about equality and Islam and why it's so important in Islam? Mm -hmm. Aside from Hajj, it's just yeah, in general. Yeah. Islam, uh, my general um, view, point of view on how Islam emphasizes on equality is that in the, preamp in the beginning I said, if the origin is one, the reason as to why we live is one, and our destination, the supposedly destination of all of us, is supposed to be one, then why are you not one? So Allah wants us to be one, but just because he gives us freedom to either believe or disbelieve, it's we who make differences amongst ourselves. Because inna ilahakum wahid, right? Mm. He, he, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is one. Wa dinukum wahid. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did, did not make different religions. He made one religion. It is we, the people, the, the human being, who change it, call it names. But wama arsalna. Every prophet that was sent came to establish the oneness of God, irrespective of whether he's a Jew or Arab. So if we are originally one and our purpose is one, the destination is supposed to be one, why should we differ? So that's the, the meaning. That's the meaning. Because when we reach there, if the differences are established legally, are legalized to be part of Islam, mm -hmm. one would not say, would say, oh Allah, don't judge me like him, because you gave him much preference over me. Why should you judge me? But because he is going to judge us equally, so we must live equal. If you don't pray, you don't blame anybody because we are equal. That is what is elaborated in the Prophet's hadith when uh, 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 some of the companions, the, the least privileged, came to the Prophet, said, oh Prophet, the rich have taken all the, 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 the rewards from us. Yusalluna kama nusalli. They pray the way we do. They, 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 they perform fasting the month of Ramadan, we do so. You see, they do every act of worship like we do. But they have another extra thing that they do that we do not. We don't have that uh, financial uh, 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 ability mm -hmm. to give out in charity. The prophet told them, no, you have. You have to. They s he told them some of the things. They said, but they also do that. He told them, uh, that uh, that is ni'matullahi yahdi li yasha. But I don't think that that should be a difference for somebody to be superior over the other. Because when God is judging a rich ma human being, he judges them because he says in one of his hadith al-Qudsi, he says that the money you have is Allah's it money. Mm -hmm. he, it is not yours. The way he gave it to you, he can as well give it to anybody. He can, so there is equality. Whatever we see that maybe there is no equality here, why is this uh, uh, begging and the other one is not begging? No, that's not how we judge things. We judge things from the source, from where we live, and where we are going is what? We're all from clay. Unless you got, you, these people who say Big Bang and what evolution, no, that's not our origin. Our origin is known, we are all mm. one. Unless you say you are an animal, then you are in another race. But as long as you are a human being, there you is only one that. human mm. race. All right, uh, thank you very much, Jamal, and thank you very much, Yusuf. It was a wonderful conversation with both of you here.
So once again, thank you very much for joining me here tonight. Uh, dear viewers, I hope you guys enjoyed today's episode. And uh, inshallah, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us all the ability to go and perform hajj and so that we can see the true equality that's out there and the beauty of hajj. So until then, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us all. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.